Now, what were you, when the transports came in late 41, what were you allowed to take with you? Could you take everything with you? What did you pack? Yes, we were able to take, I think one by weight. The suitcases, and I don't know how much weight each individual was able to take along. And so, of course, we tried to take a little bit of everything that we thought we would need. And that included clothing and certain types of food that didn't need too much preparation, but would be nourishing, let's say, dry beans or peas. So, um, certain items like soap that we saw, I think it was more or less passed on from one transport to the other, what people thought we would need because we really didn't know what, what we're going to have or where we're going. We had no idea where we're going. Did you hear any rumors? Were there any rumors? Where are we world? going? I think we did. What sort of rumors? Well, all kinds of rumors. A rumor is a rumor. <laughs> all kinds of rumors. And it's an, there were rumors that we're going to, to concentration camps, to Poland. There was another rumor that we're going to a place called Theresienstadt, which nobody really knew what it was. Did you already know what was going on in Poland at that time? No. Actually, there was really, except that we knew that the certain people that were not in a mass transport that were sent away from home as an individual, that they didn't come back, or that some news seeped through that they were killed, or we didn't know anything, you know, what was happening. There, actually, there were no gas chambers at that time. I don't think they were even in Poland. They haven't built them yet. So you're packing up these supplies to go on the transport how did the order come in that you went on a transport? How did you know that you were going on a transport? I think it was alphabetical. I mean, in a city itself, it was alphabetical, I think. Was there some place you had to report to? Did somebody oh, yes. come to you? Oh, yes, we and... definitely. We, we were notified. And then we had to... <clears throat> We spent maybe a night or two in a in a large hall. In our case, it was like a gym, gymnasium, and uh, there were hundreds and hundreds of people that we were sleeping on the floor, and that was already the beginning of things that expect were expecting us in the future. And. When you say that, what, in what way was it like the things that you were expecting in the future? Well, for instance, that there were many, many people in one place and that we didn't have a place to even to sleep, that we slept on, let's say, just mattresses on the floor, and that's the only space we had. There was no other space that we could occupy. How long were you in that gymnasium? Oh, only one or two nights. And then what happened? Then we were taken to the railroad station, and we were not put into cattle cars. We were put into regular railroad cars, sitting. Well, we still didn't know where we were taken. And you still had your belongings with you at this time? No, the suitcases were someplace else on the train. Okay. Were, uh, were you separated from your suitcases when you arrived? Were your belongings with you? Were you reunited with your belongings? I think that our suitcases were marked with, uh, everybody was issued a number, and the suitcases were marked but our numbers, and that's how we were able to 
identify them or get them after we have arrived in the bag. In our case, we were allowed to keep our suitcases. The people who came there much later, their suitcases were confiscated and everything that was in the suitcase was confiscated. But being that we were just, the ghetto was actually only started a few months before we got there. So we were able to keep our things in our suitcases. Did you know what, you said you didn't know where you were going? No. Uh, what was, how long a train trip was it? A few hours. And did you talk to other families while you were on the train? No. I just remember being in one compartment with my mother and father. Okay. And I don't think we were allowed to talk to anybody else. Were you talking among yourself, amongst yourselves? Not too much, I think. Just looking at each other. What do you think was going on in everybody's minds? I think every everybody was worried about Each other. I was worried about my parents, they were probably worried about me. So when you got to where you were going, what's the first thing you remember saying? I really, <clears throat> I think the first thing we saw was just some Germans and some, also some Czech police and I think we were just you know taking off the train and marched to a gathering place where we received our suitcase and where we all received a mattress to sleep on and where we were separated where men was were separated from women.